Hi, I'm Christian. This is Lazy Devs. Pork like a rogue like tutorial. We are currently in the middle of making this menu work. I already explained last time around, um, you know, a little bit about you know so my my gameplay considerations that I have. Um, so we have like this menu system going on. Um, now I want to actually um, start triggering some of those um, some of those or. Um, commands um, so I think uh, we're gonna start with um, let's do the trash command first like throwing away stuff I think that should be the most simple one okay so we are going to go to the hmm so this is kind of like questionable where we're gonna put this because to some extent it's just gameplay but on the other hand it's also UI so it's kind of like you know, whenever you have categories you always get like in these categories where it's like things that don't really fit any other categories I'm gonna put it in UI so it's gonna be function, I'm gonna call it trig use. It will trigger a use. That seems makes makes sense to me. And then here in our um, when we're using stuff, we're just gonna use okay, like uh, trig use here. That's it. And then that, that function will take care of everything. Now here in a trick use function, we actually do something that we actually did a little bit something, something like this here already. So this might be an interesting um, situation to actually um, put this into a function. So actually what we want to be doing is this little part here, this ternary where we're grabbing the item that we're using, because that's something that we want to be, you have to figure out which item we're interacting with. Um, do we have to though? Yeah, pro probably do, right? Well, not, not always. Sometimes we don't have to. Huh. Maybe maybe we don't need it after all. So let's try. Let's maybe try a different approach. Um, verb. We want to have like figure out what kind of verb we are using right now. What is the thing that we have to be do? Well, what the user selected. So um, <clears throat> we're gonna go verb equals um, use wind. dot txt uh, square brackets uh, use wind dot cur. So this this should give us the verb that we're going for, and so it's going to be if verb equals trash, then trash. <laughs> well, I guess I don't, I don't have to specify it. Else, if verb equals equip. Then, uh, then verb equals uh, eat, and then throw. Like so. And then maybe uh, we want to roll back some of the windows. So um, I guess we're gonna go um, uh, use wind dot. Um, dir equals zero, and then also maybe like okay, the inventory window it kind of depends, right? Let's go, let's make it disappear. You uh, inf wind dot dir equals zero, and then um, upd equals um, up update underscore game so after we use the item we won't be won't be back in our game and that's actually might be something that's that's like questionable because um i think in, depending on what we select sometimes we actually want to be still in the in the item window especially actually trash and equip would be the one where we actually want to stay so i don't know let's 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 just like question mark this for now but i think like just making returning to to the game is, is going to be okay so let me try if this works okay there's still something that we don't have and that's going to be the stat wind okay so now we're back Okay, so <clears throat> trashing things. So this is a bit, a bit weird because um, if we're trashing things, uh, it kind of depends on where our um, inventory window cursor is. Because we might be, tr um, we could, we can trash from the equipment slot, 
but we can also trash from the inventory slot. So we're going to do something like um, if uh, we might actually here where we do verb. I'm going to use I, and I'm going to put in a wind dot cur in here. And so it, this is going to be a bit uh, faster. So we're going to go if I is smaller than three, then else end. And so if smaller than three, then we're going to go E Q P I equals nil. And otherwise uh, it's going to be inv I minus three is equals nil. This trashing really just d deletes the item. Um, oh, not double equals, single equals. So let's try that. Let's trash this broadsword. Now it's gone. Let's trash leather armor. It's gone. Let's trash this. It's gone. And let's trash this. And we already see that it's kind of not good that we're returning to, to the game. It's kind of like would be nice if we stayed, um, you know, uh, if we stayed there, if we stayed in the menu. So we're going to think about how to make that work in a second. Um, all right, so then, then let's let's go to the equipment. So I guess if you're equipping, then we we know that that. Yeah. Okay. So this is the moment where we want to actually grab the the type of the object we're talking about, because if we are equipping an armor, it goes in a different slot than if we were equipping a um, a weapon. So we need to actually grab, find out which which weapon we're talking about. Let me think about this real quick. Okay, so um, I'm thinking I'm gonna just like use this, the same ternary. I'm not sure if it makes sense to create a whole um, function for this. Um, so I'm gonna just just like grab the item type uh, item number using the same ternary we used above uh, instead of the wind cur because we already have this in stored in I. I'm gonna can like plug in the I in here and that grabs us the, I hate it when that happens, when um, that grabs us the item from um, from whatever slot it needs to be grabbed from. Uh, if i equals smaller and okay, mm -hmm. so this the I, ITM is now stores the item and then we're gonna go local. Uh, we don't need to type here. We, we just, the only place we need it is just here in equipment because each doesn't need to type and throw doesn't need to type I think. So we just can go here we're gonna local, or actually we don't need, actually even save it in a function. We're gonna go if um, item type itm equals web, then else and and so the, if, if the if it's weapon, then we're gonna say um, eqp. One, this is the slot one for the weapon equals um, inf, uh, itm and otherwise eqp2 equals itm. And then all, all that's left, we actually have to re delete the item from the inventory slot because we equipped it. So we're going to go inf i minus 3 equals nil, just as if we had deleted it. So this should allow us to equip a sword now. And you can see the sword is now here and we can e equip the armor. That's good. Uh, we actually don't want, hmm, I just realized, we actually don't want to delete it. Uh -huh. There's a bit of an issue because we have to think about if there's already an item equipped in that slot, that item shouldn't be destroyed. It should like go back in our inventory. Um, let me think. Yeah, let's do it a little bit differently. So it's like we're going to have a local. I'm going to call it slot and it's going to be by default, it's going to be two. And if the type is weapon, then we're going to go slot equals one. And we don't need that anymore. And then here in the inventory, um, I minus three equals EQP slot. So we're grabbing whatever was in the equipment slot and we're putting it in our inventory. And if there was nothing in the inventory slot, we're going to grab a nil and put it in inventory. So it's going to be equivalent to deleting it. And then we're going to have the ITM, which we already start. So that's going to be the item number. And we're going to put that in the, into the slot. So this would be a better solution maybe for this. 
Good. So let's try that. Okay, so I want to maybe add a second um, add a second sword. Um, so let me let me add a second sword here. Um, rusty sword. And it's gonna be a weapon. Um, 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 um I'm gonna get it. Come on, I hate this. I hate the ugh. Ugh. Ugh, when the cursor doesn't want to do the thing that you want it to do, ugh, the worst. So we're gonna equip it. Now we have the rusty sword. Now we're gonna equip the broadsword. Now the broadsword is here and rusty sword is in, is in here. So that's good. Only problem now here is you can see that um, um, selecting the broadsword is, um, is have, has, does have like the equipment function here, but we're actually already in our equipment slot. Um, I have like a, so technically you could do like a de-equip, um, but that can kind of like creates like a, it opens up a can of forms. What happens if your inventory is full and then you want to de-equip, then there's not going to be an inventory slot for this. So I thought um, you can't actually de-equip and we're not going to actually have a lot of situations where you want to de-equip something. Um, so the only way for you to get rid of something uh, in your equipment slot is just to, to throw it away, to trash it. Um, and you know, that's kind of like a bit restrictive, but, um, but, uh, yeah, again, I think most, most people won't, won't never be in a situation where this is, a, is an issue. And if we uh, realize that we design some kind of item that people actually want to actively de-equip, then that's fine. Then we are just gonna, just gonna add this functionality to be able to de-equip things. Uh, for now, I just want to go to UI and I don't want the equip thing to show up. Um, no, here. I don't want the equip to show up if um, if inf and infincur is greater than two, greater than three. And I think, I'm not sure what the order is, so I'm not gonna do it. So now you can see if we're gonna equip the broadsword the broadsword equip and there is no equip um, menu item showing up now because it's already equipped so the only thing we can do is trash um, we can but oh we actually crash trashed it <laughs> um, so equip and the only one for us to de-equip the broadsword is to equip something else instead or to just trash it so you then that means that you lose the sword I think that's fine that's that's okay and if you disagree then let me know in the comment section <laughs> Um, okay, so this um, clears up the equipment and the trashing. Uh, all, all that's left to do is the eating and the throwing, but these guys are going to be like, you know, can of worms now because it's kind of like eating and throwing depends on really what the, what the item currently is. So before I do these, um, I want to maybe solve this problem that, you know, that you return. Uh, you want to be actually returning to the menu uh, now. So let me think about how to do this. Okay, so the way we can do this is gonna we're gonna new, do a new function, um, a variable called after, and that kind of like being defines on what what's supposed to be happening after um, after this was uh, uh, what happens after the um, the verb has been executed. So we're gonna after uh, usually it's gonna be back. Um, so that's okay back, equip is also back, but sometimes we, uh, after is gonna be um, something else. So we're gonna go if um, after equals back, then else if after equals <coughs> close, or let's call it game, Okay, so, so this was game, like everything just closes up and, and we are back. Um, but if we're just gonna, gonna return to the, to the inventory, uh, like going one step back basically, then uh, we want the use window to go there, but everything else stays. Uh, and also, hmm, and also cur wind equals inf wind. And everything stays. Uh, 
Um, there is a bit of a problem here, as you can tell. We actually equipped the sword, but the menu didn't update. So, um, hmm. so maybe we could now... We actually gonna use this function that shows up the that shows the show inf. We're just gonna go e call a show inf. Something like this. Uh, use wind, um, we're gonna close the use wind window and we're gonna just show the inventory from scratch. So let's try that. So now you can see. Things are working, and if we trash things, it also shows the inventory. That's good. Um, I'm not entirely happy about how the cursor returns to the center. Um, we could save the position of the cursor. Did, didn't, didn't we already save it anyway? I? Yeah, I. Okay, that's good. And so let's do like show inf and e inf. Um, inf wind dot cur equals i. So when you now rusty sword equip, it stays there instead of like jumping to the center line now. And if we trash this, the cursor stays where it is. <laughs> Good, I like it. This is this is this is uh, this is shaping up. Let me think about what to do next. All right, so let us actually, it feels a bit weird, but actually we can start making the actual um, items do something. Because we can manipulate them now, but we can actually make them do something. I wanted to test something out real quick, so I can trash it. Aha. So you can see now there's like multiple inventory windows on top of each other. That's because we do the show inventory, that creates another inventory window on top of the old one. So in order to make this work, we're going to have to actually delete the old from the window list. So wind, um, show wind. So now when we trash it and then return, it doesn't, still doesn't work. Why? Oh no, not the show. What am, what am, what, what did, what, what did, like this. So now this works. Um, also the stat wind as well. Okay, now they disappear cleanly. So delete the old stat wind and, and show wind and plop in the new one. Like copies of new ones. Good. So stats. Um, so if you think about um, the items that should change or that should have like some kind of functionality, I think the easiest way of, of, um, of adding functionality is by making weapons and armor change the stats of our player. Because we actually can see this, we have like attack and defense up there, right? So they can, we can manipulate this. Um, right, so this means that we have to act somehow track what the weapons do or what the equipment do or what the items do. So we need to add more you know, properties to the items. Uh, I'm gonna call this stat one. I, we, we, I figured it out we need, we're gonna need two stats, stat one and stat two. And depending on what kind of um, um, equipment we're talking about, what kind of item we're talking about, um, these can mean different things. So in our case, let's say the broadsword uh, in, increase our attack by two. The leather armor um, in, will increase our defense by zero. What? I will explain in a second. Um, the second stat is gonna be, let's say, let's say one, yeah, that's good. Uh, then zero, uh, let's say one. I will, I, like when talking about the food and a ninja star, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain in a second what I had here in mind. Just like fill in some values. Um, the final, um, equipment here that's going to be a rusty sword that's going to be a little bit of a weaker sword so that will increase our attack by one and you know what just not to confuse you i'm just going to fill in the rest with zeros so we're not going to think about this just yet uh, and again the second stat is also something that we can keep around but we're not going to use for now just we're going to just deal with with attack i think that's going to be it's going to be enough so broadsword will increase our attack by two and the rusty sword will increase our attack by one that's the idea here 
<clears throat> okay, so in gameplay, we're gonna create a new function that will basically update our the values of our mob because we store attack and defense in inside our mob uh, object. And that's like, you know, that's where all the interaction, all of the hit mob and, and stuff like that, stuff like that will um, grab values from. So whenever we equip or de-equip something, we just want to make sure that um, that we write the attack and defense values into our mob object. So we're going to do something like update stats. And so we're gonna go um, p mob p underscore mob player mob dot was it eighty k eighty k there we go eighty k equals um, so we always want to have an attack of one like bare bones attack bare bones <laughs> uh, plus. Um, Let's, let's 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 do it something like this and then local atk or let's let's just go it like this local atk equals one if um eqp equipment if there's something in the equipment slot if eqp one uh is not equals nil or let's let's say this if eqp one there is something in equipment slot one then and then we, in this case, we're going to grab the stat of it. So we're going to go item stat one. Oops. Um, ATK plus equals item stat one from the equipment slot, from the item in the equipment slot, like this. And then we're going to set the ATK to the ATK of the, that we derived. So again, starting at, uh, attack but, but one, we're adding whatever the stat is of the um, item in our equipment slot one, if there is something in equipment slot one, and then we drop this into our, we write this into our player mob, that, like that. And then here, when now, of course, we don't see the difference. Uh, first of all, we're not running this. So let's run this every, every time we equip, equip things. So here, when we equip things, update stats, and then also when we're trashing something from the nil, from the equipment slot, we also need to update stats. We could actually probably, it's gonna be like easier and make more sense to just always update. There's no reason not to update stats. It's not an expensive function. And you know, there might be some weird interactions that we, that we, that we take care of this way. <clears throat> and then, Um, yeah, we're not showing the stats. So in the UI, here, here's where we're drawing the stats right now. These are like bogus. And so here we can actually make things dependent. So P mob, mob dot ATK dot dot. So we see, and then we equip the rusty sword, and it goes up to two. We equip the broad sword, it goes up to three. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, so let's see if this actually has a, if we actually see, so let's equip the broad sword. We should do three damage now, and let's see if that works. Yep, we did three damage. Perfect. Um, so now we can like slaughter all of the enemies in here. Yes, you thought you guys were strong, but I'm stronger. Oh no, I've been hit. What a jerk. Good. Um, now on to the more, more difficult um, stat is gonna be the defense stat. Um, so I already told you that I don't wanna have like random, um, I don't wanna have random number generation for the attack. I want the attack to be always predictable. Um, but of course, if, um, if you everything you do in this game is always like predictable, you can like plan everything ahead. That that makes the game not that interesting, um, or at least it's like it makes it look very cerebral or cerebral, and it's it's especially bad if you put yourself in a situation where you're gonna get hit, and you know exactly that you're gonna get hit, and you know exactly that you're gonna die. That kind of like mm, removes all of all of the tension from this. Um, 
So it's actually I mean, like my argument will be that uh, that there is a place for random number generation in those types of games, but I think it makes sense to add it or at the defense and not at the attack. So uh, at it, your attack, the your agency in this world is like very planned, but um, when you expose yourself to danger, um, that's not predictable. Like uh, the the thing that that is is scary is the un unpredictable stuff. Um, so you might get hit, but you might not get hit. But you want to take the chance anyway, so you you will try to avoid getting hit anyway. So the fact that this is um, caused by um, this is manipulated by random number generator won't actually affect the way you will deal with danger. It will just be like okay, um, I might get hit, I might not get hit, but I can't count on not getting hit. So I will try to avoid it anyway. Uh, even though it's 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 actually not as um, inevitable as me doing the, the damage. Uh, I got it actually from an interesting game called um, Into the Breach, uh, where it's generally a game where everything is predictable, um, but they added like this little detail where um, if you you know there's like enemies attacking cities and you lose the game if you lose enough cities or like buildings. Um, but they added like this little detail where there's one time where the game is not completely predictable and that's um, where sometimes the cities get defended. They have like a shield and that shield fires just like a certain percentage amount of time. And sometimes you get attacked and the cities won't get hurt. And that's really great. That's what's such a, such a genius implementation of, of adding random number generation because again, it's like you avoid, you protecting the cities always anyway, no matter how high the percentage is of this defense shield um, but it feels so good if you like if you think everything is lost it's like oh no this is my last city and now it's get, gonna get attacked and you're like no i lost this game uh, and then you get attacked and then this shitty gets defended and it's like oh, i get a second chance at life you know uh, you it feels it feels exhilarating and that's generally what you're trying to achieve in games you want to try to um, uh, create exciting situations um, and i don't think the situations are getting exciting where you can't predict how much damage you will do, but it definitely gets exciting if, um, if you know, if the danger that you're exposed to is, is uh, unpredictable. Long story. Um, so I want to have two stats for defense. One stat is um, base defense, so that's kind of like something that gets uh, subtracted from the uh, amount of damage that you will get always. And the other set is going to be kind of like um, maximum defense. So it will be like, um, so min def, or let's let's call it def min, def m, or def min, and def max. So if I have like um, like min one and max three. Oh, actually, max two. Let's say. Let's let's say like I, my defense stat is going to be something like one to three. That's 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 what I want to arrive at the end. So I know that we uh, that from all of the damage that I receive, at, at least one gets subtracted. But um, it will be a number between one to three that will get subtracted. So at least one, but a maximum of three. So if I get to get for hit for three damage, I might get you know get no damage at all. But worst case scenario, I will get two off. So it's kind of like it creates like a range of of um, amount of hit points that my armor will soak up. And so that's what I want to be doing. I want to generally avoid doing the min with the, with the defense um, because that kind of like like creates like a runaway effect of of a um, arms race where it's like okay the enemy is now getting stronger, so I will get more defense. But now that I have like more base defense then me as a game designer i have to like add even more stronger enemies so they can overcome the base defense so it's like kind of like it goes for forever like that but i still want to have like the functionality in here so usually i think most of the armor will be something like zero to three zero to four zero to five so it's kind of like very varied and sometimes you will get the full full damage man a lot of a lot of explanations so um so what i what i want to do in this leather I want to put the defense minimum here and the defense maximum here. So let's let's say the our leather armor uh, is from zero to two. Or actually, yeah, we, we you, you will see on on the math in a second how this that works. Oh gosh, this guy. 
cursor. Why? Do, I, I'm not sure why this happens. I think this happens because the cursors on the edge is sometimes like, anyway. Um, so generally, I don't want to have any base defense for, for, for mobs. So that's why I'm not actually doing any defense values here. I, you see I have 80k, but I don't have death here for the mobs because um, all of the mobs will spawn with zero defense anyway. And generally I don't want to have any um, enemy mobs to have any defense uh, because that kind of like eats into our ability to predict the kind of damage we do. And it's kind of also kind of, even if you have, have like predictable defense, if you're like, um, this is an enemy that's armored and he will have one defense always. So it's kind of weird because like usually I do three damage, but with this enemy I still suddenly do two damage. Why is that so? It's gonna get very confusing. Uh, so yeah, all of the enemies will just have base defense and we're gonna uh, make stronger enemies by just giving them more health. I mean, that, that seems to me a more, um, intuitive just giving them more health rather than like doing some kind of like like tap into the math of how damage is done and sometimes doing like weird amount of damage and player not really realizing why they're getting less or more damage but it makes sense for when when it's about the player because the player is like he sees their his stats and he knows that he got this better armor so it makes sense that now they're getting less damage um so we're gonna go death min equals zero and def max equals zero. And here in the gameplay, if demon d max zero zero, and if there's something in the second slot, we're gonna go demon plus equals stat one. That's good. Uh, slot two. And D max uh, stat two like this. And def min and def max. And so here now in the, when we're drawing the UI, I want to draw the uh, use with, nope, that's not the one here. Def dot dot, def min dot dot minus dot dot, Def max. So let's see if the stats are be changing. So it's zero zero regularly, and then I'm gonna equip the leather armor, and then we're gonna get um, zero two. So this is great. Now the only thing that we're missing is we're not actually making use of that. So it's not actually affecting our gameplay. So let's make it affect our gameplay here real quick. Uh, so hit mob. That's good. Okay, so it's like here. Um, DMG equals um, minus equals um, def mob dot um, def min. So we always subtract a minimum, and then DM, and we actually can add plus. So now we're gonna add a random floor random. A number. Um, so if it's from zero to two, then we would have like just um, like something like this: def mob def max. If it's from zero to two, then uh, we're subtracting zero plus, um, and then a number from um, from zero to random two. Random two is. Um, either zero or one, but it's not actually two. Um, so in order to get the two, we're gonna add plus one at the end. But the problem here is um, we also have to subtract the min from that. So, you know, if it's zero, nothing changes, but let's say we have like a minimum defense of one and a maximum defense of two. So that should get should mean that from we have to subtract numbers from the attack, uh, from the damage value uh, between one and two. Um, 
So one is will be here, and then the random number generator should should um, output a number between zero and one, not a zero plus two, because if the random number generator in this case returns two, we add that on top of the minimum, then we might actually remove three damage. Um, and we want to just remove two damage. So we have to actually subtract the minimum from here. And again, it's math. It's just math, guys. It's just math. Trust me, this is how it works, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a complicated formula. Um, should, should I spell it out one more time? Maybe just like just be in case. So like, you know, let's say we have zero minus one. In this case, uh, zero, zero to two. Like this may, let's say this is our defense values in this kind of case. And then acceptable an, uh, amount of like how much we subtract from the damage is zero, one, two, right? Um, so this def min will be zero and this uh, random number generator should output numbers from zero, one and two. Um, so def max will be two. Def max will be two. Uh, if we get a random number generator from um, two that outputs uh, numbers from zero, one, but not two. Like it never reaches the number that you put into the R&D fun function. It's gonna be 1.99999, but never actually two. Um, so we da uh, add a plus one at the end, so it actually reaches the two. Um, we have to make this inside the bracket. Yeah. So that's fine, but now what happens if we have like a, let's say like a minimum of two to four, then acceptable numbers for, you know, how much damage we're gonna uh, prevent is gonna be two, three, four. Um, now because of the min, uh, the number generator, should output because we always get at least two right so it's going to output two zero it should output zero one or two mm. so if you just plug in the four def max if you just plug in the four in the random number generator we actually get, uh, defending too much damage um, so we have to um, subtract the minimum from the maximum to kind of get the range uh, that we are looking for to get those zero one two is the, the explanation, very elaborate explanation for, for this. But yeah, this is my system. I stuck to it. Let's try to this, let's try this. Oh, there's one more thing. Um, the damage has to be positive. So it's kind of like max zero comma. Because there is possible for us to subtract so much, uh, to protect so much damage that the damage actually gets negative. And then we're gonna get healed by the monster. And we don't want that. There's always one now. Okay, so it's, oh, because I haven't equipped the, uh, the armor. <laughs> okay, so leather armor. Minus one, one, zero. What is the minus one? I'm not sure. I did the max, so that's why I'm... Oh! No. DMG, like this. Never getting... Um, subtracting more than the DMG. Zero, zero, zero. Come on, man. Do some damage. Okay, it's not working. Now the defense is too strong. Not sure why. Uh, let me debug this out. So it always does zero damage. Um, let me. So okay, I guess I guess this we got a bit too um, carried away a little bit. So let me um, let me local def let me let me calculate the defense here um, just so we can see how much defense we're actually getting here so let me do something like this and def and put how much defense we're calculated mm. 
now it's zero all of a sudden. Um, which is also not good. Oh, we haven't equipped this, the leather. Okay, that seems to work correctly. Okay, so that's that's now correctly the so defense. And we're subtracting this from the DMG. And then DMG equals max zero DMG. That's what I'm thinking. I guess here is going to be max def DMG. That's That would be right, yeah. That's, I guess, how this works. Let's try that. Nope. It's minus one. So now the defense was two. So the defense was two. DMG was one. Oh, okay. So I guess it's min. Yeah. Oh, we should equip the leather armor. Yeah, so you see now there's like two defense, but it's made zero. Yeah, that makes sense. It's not actually getting me one defense. Uh, there is one defense. Okay. It's actually rare for one defense to come out. Okay, now we're getting a bunch of those. Random number generators, I swear, it's like, there's, they're so, uh, uh, so weird. So let's see if we can change the stats, so we now always get at least one defense. So now, if, let's say this weapon is one, two, so the minimum defense that you get is one. Um, the maximum defense get, you're gonna get is two. So now you see it's one and two, one and two. So now basically the enemies can't hurt us and that's bad, right? We always want to have a situation where enemies are always a danger. That's why I want to avoid the minimum defense set. I actually want in most armors, I want to have the minimum defense set to be at least zero. So we always can get hurt a little bit by enemies. And then maybe it's, there's gonna be some late uh, end game armor that will have defense minimum one. So it's gonna be okay. Now you're really, really un, uh, invulnerable to the, to the small enemies. Right, this was another big episode, but we got a lot of stuff done. Um, so what we want to be doing next is the thing like red bean paste. We want to be able to eat stuff. Um, and then later on, that's going to be a big step. Uh, we want to be able to throw stuff. But, you know, that's something that's coming up uh, in, the, in the far future and where we are all go, both going to be cats. Um, so, yeah, reminder that you can get a T-shirt down in a store that's not going to be looking horrible like this, but actually going to be printed correctly. Uh, and you can get the code for this episode in a doobly-doo. And you should join our Discord channel where we discuss, uh, you know, the prototype and, you know, all the features that we're going to add in the future to this game. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye. Bye.